Hello everyone, back to you into June 2020's ENSO update. So we've been doing ENSO updates every month since uh, January. And uh, yeah, we've arrived at June 2020. It's time to do another ENSO update for you. Can you believe that when this one is out of the way, we'll only have two more ENSO updates to go this year? Uh, because in September, the ENSO updates will be merged, will be amalgamated with the winter updates. Of course, ENSO is always, always an important part of winter updates. This year will be no exception. So, yes, just July and August to go for the ENSO updates, and then that will be pretty much it. And uh, we'll be into winter update territory. But we have got this month's ENSO update to go, I've got two more to do in July and August. So I'll get on with the ENSO update for you uh, very shortly. Just say it's been a busy old day at Gaz Levy today. We started with the European Outlook, of course, uh, our uh, weekend look ahead for, uh, for Europe over the next 17 days. Uh, also, Jam Friday is always on a Friday, a monthly look ahead, and a regular 10 to 14 day update as well. It has been a very, very busy day uh, today, and I hope you've been enjoying all of the content. Please give us a like on the videos. Uh, okay then, so let's get on with uh, the ENSO update for June 2020. We're going to begin, as we always do, looking at the cold and warm episodes by season uh, chart. So this is depicting, it's from NOAA by the way, CPC, NCEP and NOAA. This is depicting El Nino and La Nina events going all the way back into the 1950s when we first started reliably observing uh, ENSO. Um, so, yeah, you can see here, for example, in 1974 and 1975, we've got a landing. You're going on with these negative blue coloured numbers that we have in the boxes uh, just here. Uh, so that's La Nina. Uh, the red colour boxes are where we've got El Ninos going on. So, for example, 82, 83 had a super El Nino going to over two degrees above average with the uh, temperature normally in the equatorial Pacific Ocean. So red is El Nino, blue is La Nina. We've got the black numbers, that's where are Enso neutral. Sometimes on the warm side of Enso neutral, such as that year, 1980. Other times we're on the cold side of Enso neutral, such as in 1981, for example. Right, let's go, uh, scroll down to the current scenario then. So we go to 2019, 2020. Of course, last month, I think it was, we confirm that winter 2019-20 have the weakest, or one of the weakest, uh, El Ninos on record, barely making El Nino threshold. By the way, to get to El Nino threshold, to get El Nino designated, or a La Nina for that matter. You have to be half a degree or more above average at El Nino, or half a degree or more below average for La Nina. You have to do it over five trimonthly periods. So we did do that for the winter of 2019 20. have one, two, three, four, and five trimonthly periods. That just, just gets us uh, to El Nino. The peak, if you can call it that, of this El Nino event was for the trimonthly period January, February, March at just 0.6 of a degree above average. These are a little bit preliminary and sometimes these uh, numbers can get moved around a little bit. So if any one of these uh, numbers just here, uh, where we're half a degree above average in those three boxes and that one there, if any one of those should ever be moved down to 0.4, then it will turn out that we had an Enso neutral winter and not an El Nino winter. That's how much of a borderline we were during this winter between Enso neutral and El Nino. But as it is at the moment, it's basically the weakest El Nino that's ever been recorded, I think. Uh, now, for the latest triumph period, which is March, April, May, we see that number goes back to black. So that takes back to Enso neutral, 0 0.3 degrees above average. We've come away from that all important half a degree or more above average threshold. And there we are. We're back to Enso neutral uh, once again. So as these next uh, boxes are filled in for the next few trimark periods, it'll be interesting what happens. These, this number is going to start going negative, uh, but the question is how negative will it go? Will it reach landing your threshold half a degree or more below average, and will it be over five trimarkly periods? We'll have to wait and see uh, until much later in the year about that. But at the moment, as far as uh, trimark period of March, April, May is concerned, we are at Enso neutral. 
Now, this is our temperature anomaly is. We're looking in the actual Pacific Ocean. We did last month's ENSO update in May. So, of course, we're looking at the sea surface temperature anomalies in the actual Pacific Ocean from Peru over here to Indonesia uh, over there. Uh, now, so last month we had this blue, this area of blue uh, colours, which is colder than average subsurface temperature anomaly through the central part of the actual Pacific Ocean. It did appear that we was uh, developing a signal for La Nina. Let's have a look at the very latest for the 23rd of June. Uh, so what's happened is that eastern parts of the actual Pacific Ocean have turned colder. Central parts of the actual Pacific Ocean have possibly warmed up a little bit. Again, that situation uh, last month, coldest anomalies were just there. Uh, a situation this month is that the coldest anomalies are kind of over towards the eastern side of the actual Pacific Ocean now. And also beginning to sort of trail back towards Chile uh, a little bit as well. In the central part of the equatorial Pacific Ocean, where it was coldest, it's actually a little bit less cold at the moment. It's warmed up uh, very slightly. It still looks like a signature for La Nina at the moment, though, to me, that, and uh, particularly an eastern-based uh, La Nina. So I think we are moving towards probably a weak La Nina for this, um, for this autumn and possibly into winter. But we shall see what the model output has to say. But definitely the eastern part of the actual Pacific Ocean has cooled the central part has perhaps got a little bit less cold. Subsurface temperature on the anomalies also back this up. So with this, you have to think that, like, we've got the surface of the equatorial Pacific Ocean just here. It's very hot in Gaswell, these towers, while I'm doing this, so <laughs> I'm struggling a little bit. Uh, that's like the surface of the equatorial Pacific Ocean just there. We've got Peru over here, and we've got Indonesia uh, over there, these are the depths of the ocean, very, very deep ocean, of course, going away down to 300 metres. So, we can see that in the eastern part of the uh, equatorial Pacific Ocean, at depth, uh, from like the surface down to around 150 metres, we are significantly colder than average. Significantly cold than average with both the surface and the subsurface temperature anomalies in the uh, eastern part of the equatorial Pacific Ocean. On the temperature scale, we are kind of like going down to 46 degrees below average. For the essential part of the equatorial Pacific Ocean, not as cold perhaps as it was a few weeks ago. That's how things looked a few weeks ago. Uh, so 13th of May, for example, the subsurface temperature normally is looking a bit like that. Um, more stretched out under the surface through the central and also eastern part of the equatorial Pacific Ocean. But now, with subsurface temperature anomalies, while they have got colder, have uh, really um, sort of uh, amalgamated over on the eastern side of the equatorial Pacific Ocean. Still, it's like a signature for landing your boat to me. Uh, SOI, the Southern Oscillation Index, which is an index that's uh, measuring the atmospheric uh, setup, uh, really, in the Southern Pacific Ocean, measuring air pressures between Darwin and Tahiti from the uh, Queensland Government and Bureau of Meteorology. Uh, so when the SOI is in its negative phase, the atmospheric setup is reflective of El Nino. When the SOI is in its positive phase, the atmospheric setup will be reflective of La Nina. So positive is La Nina. Uh, negative is El Nino. If we scroll down, you can see that uh, we have uh, quite a bit of negativity of the SOI. Though back into the end of uh, May, beginning of June, actually we have quite strongly positive SOI. So, for example, 30th of May came out at plus 17. 31st of May came out at plus 20. 1st of June came out at plus 9. Positive numbers reflective of a La Nina type uh, atmospheric setup. But then we go more negative as we go further on into June. So, for example, 15th of June comes out at minus 22. 16th of June comes out at minus 11. 18th of June goes down to minus 30. 19th of June down to minus 32. 20th of June down to minus 33.95. Very, very negative. Reflective of a strong El Nino type pattern. Uh, the more recent returns have been a little bit uh, more positive, I suppose. So we've got uh, 22nd of June at plus 2 and 23rd of June at plus 8. 24th of June at plus 492. Latest number for 25th of June is at minus 3.87. 
so the atmosphere it says has actually been a little bit reflective of an El Nino, and I suppose that could be why uh, we have seen um, the sea surface temperature anomalies and the subsurface temperature anomalies getting a little bit less cold this month or the past couple of weeks in the central part of the Equator Pacific Ocean. It could be. Uh, we see with the 30-day uh, SOI average, which, which is this red line, that's also uh, moved downwards. So um, back at the uh, start of June, we was up here, actually weekly positive with the SOI. Where we are now is back into negative sort of territory. So for June, then, atmospheric setup has been more reflective of an El Nino. So at the moment, the ocean, which I think does want to go to La Nina, uh, the ocean is fighting with the atmosphere for ascendancy, really. Atmosphere is more an El Nino type setup. I've got a feeling the ocean will win this, but we shall see. We shall see. Uh, right, this is what CFSV2 is forecasting. So uh, we'll look at a little bit of model output before we go. Uh, so again, with this, the temperature anomalies are on the side. The dates are on the bottom in monthly periods. The uh, current situation with CFS V2 is that we're around here. So we're um, sort of uh, on the uh, negative side, really, of ENSO neutral. The black dash line is the ensemble mean. That's going into weekly negative territory. Going into landing your territory, but only a week landing year. Going to around one degree, just under one degree. Uh, below average as we go through the rest of the summer and into the autumn, beginning to pick back up as we head in towards the spring. So CFS V2, as it has done really since January, it's been a very, very consistent signal from the CFS V2. We normally associate CFS with a lot of chopping and changing, um, but, but I mean, this time it really is hats off to the CFS because it's been going for this uh, consistently since January, really, uh, a week planning it to set up through this summer and persist into the autumn and winter. And, and it's still going for it, has been very, very consistent with this. Uh, can sips also look like like this is from tropicaltidbits.com. So uh, a, a weak landing is signal in the actual Pacific Ocean for this month for June. Look what happens though as we go through the rest of the summer. That landing is signal uh, does uh, does strengthen a little bit. Probably still quite a weak landing is signal overall, but it definitely is a landing year uh, that we've got there by the time we get through to September. That will be a definitive. Uh, landing uh, a bank again. I think mainly uh, a week, possibly going down to moderate, but but really I think we're looking uh, at a week landing here uh, to borderline moderate. But it is definitely a landing uh, signature that that Kansas is going for as well, fading out a little bit as we go into the winter, as you would uh, expect. ECMWF looks like this, so uh, again we've got our dates on the bottom of the chart, temperature anomalies are along the side, this is the ensemble plume, uh, so by the time we get through to like the middle of the summer and the end of the summer, that's where the broad thrust of the ensemble plume is, somewhere between uh, enter neutral on the cold side and weak La Nina. Uh, really, that is a movement towards landing in compared to last month. That's how things looked uh, last month. So the on ensemble plume last month was kind of in that position, ranging from Enso Neutral on the warm side to perhaps borderline weak landing year. But now the range in June, that was made, the range in June is really Enso Neutral on the cold side to, uh, to yes, to, to weak landing year. Uh, and also, uh, Jamstech has moved as well. So Jamstech is now forecasting a weak La Nina event too. So again, temperature anomalies on the side, dates and monthly periods on the bottom. Current position is just there on the cold side of Enso Neutral. The ensemble mean, which is this thick red line, does go into weak La Nina territory, just under that all-important half a degree uh, or more uh, below average threshold. So, yes, that one is also getting us into a week landing year. That is a significant change on last month, by the way. Let's have a look at April, first of all. So, uh, that's how the ensemble plume looked in April, generally keeping things on the warm side of Enso Neutral. Uh, that's how things looked in May. Again, keeping things on the warm side of Enso Neutral. And a very significant drop towards a week landing year has taken place uh, with this update during uh, June. So Jamstech has shifted quite significantly. And then finally we've got the UK Met Office, Glow C5. So this is the sea survey temperature anomaly for July, August, September. Again, showing that eastern base landing signal over here. 
Uh, as we go through to the last tri-monthly period, which is going to take us from September through to November, through the autumn, just a general sort of landing your signal then. That is like a weak landing your signal to borderline moderate, but but it is uh, definitely through the autumn signal for La Nina. So it looks to me as though we are well and truly on our way to La Nina here. Uh, it's going to take a few months to get it designated, of course, but I've got a feeling we are pretty much now thumbed up on the idea of that, uh, that we're going to have at least a week landing uh, already setting up and it's likely to continue, I think, through the remainder of the summer and into the autumn as well. Of course, something unexpected could happen. We could see a failure, a collapse of this landing year. But, but to me, most of these models appear to be going really for, for, for a week landing year. And I suspect that is uh, that is where we're going to finish up by the time we get through to the autumn and into the winter. So I would have thought we'll be looking at a, a week landing year for uh, the winter of 2000 and 2021. Now, we could see a, a, a snow, snowballing of this landing. It could power up a little bit, perhaps. Um, so we need to keep an eye on that, see whether it turns out to be stronger than anticipated by most of these models. It is possible that we might see a failure of the landing as well. It might go back to NSO neutral. I say something unexpected could happen. But at the moment, to me, it looks like we are pretty clearly going into, uh, into a landing year event. Uh, right, so we'll do it all over again uh, next month. That will be the penultimate ENSO update for 2020 uh, next month. And then, of course, the last one will be in August. And then we will amalgamate, we'll merge the ENSO updates with winter updates in September. Uh, but for this video, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.